Well, it's almost time for the main event of the evening, the WBC Championship of the World. At 147 pounds, Floyd Mayweather Jr. facing away with the reigning champion, Victor Ortiz. If you've just joined us, wherever you're watching around the world, earlier this evening, Jesse Vargas opened the show with a split decision victory over Josecito Lopez in a very entertaining fight. And then Eric Morales, the future Hall of Famer, scored a 10th round TKO victory over Pablo Cesar Cano. And then the fight you just saw, Saul Alvarez stops Alfonso Gomez in the sixth round of this scheduled 12 round world championship fight, the second offense for Saul Alvarez. So that's a good one. Now, the MGM Grand Garden Arena here, when you get to see a wide shot, you'll realize that this place is packed for this fight. They had a few tickets that they sold today to, I would say, sell this place out. When you have 4,000 people that show up at the weigh-in, you're going to sell out the Grand Garden Arena, and I believe they've done that. In attendance here, they're introducing the fighters that are in attendance here, Paulie Malinaje, Winky Wright, Spinks. Former world champion Leon Spinks. Seven-time world champion Thomas Hickman Hearns. Tommy Hearns is here. They just introduced Olympic Tommy. Gold medalist, another multiple-time world champion, Sugar Ray Leonard. Ray Leonard's here and being introduced. And oh, we have a chance to show you the way in from yesterday. Yes, this is Ortiz on the scale. 47 pounds. The welterweight limit. There's a body that's done some work at the gym. 140s. Money Man Weather. Lots of laughing in here. But watch the way he puts his uh, hand eventually in his throat. You know, he May is the Mayweather, Dave, gets him back into this uh, pay-per-view yeah. uh, money, so he can make as much as $50 million from this fight. I think his uh, official purse is $25 million, but certainly he's going to make $30, $40, $40, maybe even $50 million. Uh, this guy is that big of an attraction. He, he loves playing the bad guy. When, when you talk to him up close, he really is a nice, a nice individual. Well, I've known the family for many, many years. I've broadcast almost all of the Black Mambas, uh, championship fight that's his uncle uh, Roger Mayweather was a champion in his own right now they're introducing the entertainers Jamie Fox is here in attendance recording superstar 57 you say 50 cent is here close friend of Floyd Mayweather yes ladies and gentlemen from the Los Angeles Lakers Magic Johnson Magic Johnson of uh, Los Angeles Laker fame is here. I'll tell you the big fights bring out the stars. They just introduced Denzel Washington. He comes to most of the fights here. He's not just a Mayweather fan, he's a fight fan. He comes to most of them. So the crowd is anticipating as much as we are this fight and have it underway in a little while. We'll have the anthems and you'll get to see all of the free fight festivities leading up to Floyd Mayweather's 16th month layoff and his return to the ring. Of course, everybody's talking still about Manny Pacquiao. It seems that Manny says, yeah, he will take the Olympic style uh, uh, blood test uh, leading up to the uh, you know, a fight if they can get it signed. Bob Arum wants to get it signed. He, uh, of course, is the not only the matchmaker but the promoter for Pacquiao, and he'd love to work with uh, Mayweather and get this job done. Imagine that tour, oh, wow. that promotional tour, would be unbelievable. As you take a look at uh, Victor Ortiz, and the, as you would hope for him, the game face is there. <laughs> Smiles gone. If you watch the 24-7 series on HBO, which is also telecast around the world, 
When I talk to my buddies from Beast Boy in uh, the WBC, New Zealand, they tell me that he is uh, the the show all these things in Australia and New Zealand and all the countries the that we go to in the 247 picture on the uh, HBO. So we can tell you that they're aware of how poorly Mayweather presents himself and what a nice guy and what a hard road this guy had uh, coming up. Of course, Floyd will counter with, okay, so his mother left him, uh, he and his brother, when he was very, very young, and he sort of had to bring himself up. Mayweather will say, hey, my father was a drug addict, my mother was an alcoholic, my dad went to prison. He says, every black guy comes up very, very tough. So, you know, there's some truth to what he says. But he loves playing the role of the bad guy. He says he doesn't care anything about the fact that his dad doesn't speak to him or wouldn't bother him. And I find that hard to believe. I find it also hard to believe that the, you know, the felony charges and the other lawsuits against him are at some stage going to wear this guy down. I don't care how much money he is. He's spending an awful lot on, of it on legal fees. And his uncle, Roger Mayweather, he absolutely loves and adores and loves working with him. And Roger, while he, he's not the same guy I knew several years ago, he's become a foul mouth kind of old guy. And maybe that's their way of... If they don't like you, they still remember you. That's right. And it, uh, as you get a look at Floyd going through his final paces, and there's Ortiz. In the, the Mexican line. National Anthem plays. They have that Mexican National Anthem going for Ortiz. And of course, whenever anybody sings the national anthem live from Mexico, it ends up with a Viva Mexico. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing. Just six days ago, we paid tribute to 9-11, the 10th anniversary. At this time, we would like to dedicate the national anthem to all the men and women, the victims and the heroes that we lost on that fateful day. And to all the men and women serving in the armed forces for the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, here to sing the national anthem of the United States, please welcome Jasmine Villegas. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleam, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets rang loud the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag Still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free? And no. So with the singing of the national anthem, it won't be long now until the fighters begin making their way in. For the countries that are just joining us for the main event, 
The sun is setting in the desert southwest as we return to Las Vegas, Nevada. It's the boxing capital of the world where we visit the MGM Grand Garden Arena. The show is called Star Power and is a presentation of Mayweather Promotions in association with Golden Boy. Our main event of the evening as you take a look at the tail of the tape, Floyd Mayweather and Victor Ortiz shows that Ortiz has a lot in his favor. He's an inch taller, he's a little bit heavier, he's 10 years younger, but he's giving away three inches in reach. Dave Bontempo, and I'm the Colonel Bob Sheridan here, and we're glad that you can be with us. Davey Boy, give us the rule. And the rules, Colonel, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. You go to the scorecards at the end of round four if there is an accidental headbutt, and the fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. Key graphic, the no three knockdown rule. We saw that in our last fight, in the Saul Alvarez fight. The referee did not have the option to issue a standing eight count as you look at Victor Ortiz on his way in. So he stopped the fight. All right, the picture of Ortiz, as you see, has gone up in the monitor here in the arena at the MGM. And we should point out, he's the guy that people want to see win this fight. In spite of the fact that it's the home of Floyd Mayweather Jr., people have become ingratiated with Victor Ortiz. And I think a lot of that has to do with the way he presented himself on the HBO series 24 7. Yeah, it is Mayweather's town, but it is Ortiz's house, and uh, especially on Mexican Independence Weekend. That's been true of everybody Floyd Mayweather has fought. Yeah, he's the uh, bad guy, and uh, he's always the guy getting the booze. But if you put P O O S, you can put a dollar sign through that S. This guy's getting two and a half million dollars for this fight. It's his first time defense since uh, his April win with Andre Berto. Both fighters in that fight, as you mentioned, were on the canvas. They were both down. That was a terrific fight. And uh, yeah, what does it mean? Berto fought a couple weeks ago. We're going to get about a half a million dollars. And he gets two and a half million dollars tonight. And that was a very close fight. With uh, Ortiz and Berto. Now, uh, this is, it really is first time on that really big stage. We mentioned being followed 24 7 by the HBO cameras, 20,000 in the MGM, multi million dollar payday. It's a big, big night for this guy. Turn pro and 0 4 with a first round knockout over Rule Montez, and it's been a wonderful career for him. He won his first seven professional fights, five by knockout. His first loss was by a disqualification in 05 when he hit Corey Alcorn with an illegal punch. His only other loss was to Marcos Medina in June of 09. And boy, his reputation suffered from that one. Yeah, because he quit in the middle of the Madonna fight after he had him on the canvas three times. And that was a big blow to him. And you know, the question is, can Mayweather get him to that point again to make him make a choice and possibly quit? He, that's why it is amazing that he's come this far, this fast, from that point. Well, in reality, I don't think you'll see any quitting tonight. He's had six straight wins since his loss, big wins over Antonio Diaz, Nate Campbell, Vivian Harris, and, of course, Berto. Tyson in attendance. We mentioned some of the celebrities in attendance. Mike uh, really enjoying life now. That's his wife right next to him, and I give her a lot of credit. Oscar De La Hoya, who's had his problems, but he has everything under control. Great guy is Oscar De La Hoya, and I'm glad that he has his personal life straightened out again. As P. Diddy, he loves the fights. Very chic with his sunglasses. He's got his own line of clothing. Not too decked out for a guy that has his own clothing line. He's had his own moment here, you know? There's Mark Wahlberg, one of my favorite actors. Did you see him in the shooter? He was great. <laughs> Mark Wahlberg, he's a great actor. All right, here's Floyd Mayweather. That's amazing. He comes out second, and Ortiz is the champion. Usually the champion comes out last. 
Now, the monitors here in the arena have just shown Floyd Mayweather, and they begin to boo immediately. You ready? Great counter puncher, speed with both hands and feet. Most people say he might be the best defensive fighter ever. He'll stock and move all night. This guy does it all. We gotta wait till we get to the. We gotta wait till we get to the what's name. It certainly seems like uh, this is his office. He's not worried at all. He has no fear or butterflies. He loves his time in the ring. When you talk about his great defensive uh, record, a lot has come from the shoulder roll. Puts the shoulder up, blocks, punches it, then pivots back and works off it. He had a string of fights where, something like six or seven consecutive fights where his opponents all landed in each fight less than 20% of their punches. That's an unbelievable defensive string for a guy who's also a good offensive fighter. Dave and I both know this guy personally, and I can assure you, He's nowhere he near musical. as bad as the image he loves to portray. Nope. He's actually a pretty likable guy. At least I've found him that way. Floyd Mayweather Jr. Turned pro in October of 96, and he has won all 41 of his professional fights. Had a lot to say leading up to this one. He's always in great shape, and when he takes his robe off, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. He says, I'll take away the strength of Ortiz early, and then I'll break him down, and I will stop him. Ortiz says he'll stop Mayweather. Well, I never heard a fighter come into a championship fight that said he couldn't stop the other guy. But in reality, there's no way Ortiz can box with him. No, I think Ortiz is going to come out and try to come straight at him and draw off and try to, and try to be the guy that puts Mayweather on the deck. Yeah, we saw Shane Mosley hurt Floyd Mayweather, but that was his only highlight in that fight. It happened in round two. That's the last we heard of, May of Mosley in that fight. Some great resilience from Mayweather. And in reality for Ortiz, he must get pressure on this guy and must try to get his respect because this guy really doesn't respect anybody. I know in private he respects a lot of fighters that he's studied over the years, but he never carries himself like he has any fear. He's super confident. And in the time when Shane rocked him, that was it for Shane the rest of the way. It's like we used to say years ago when Tito Trinidad would actually get knocked down. We say, uh oh, that opponent's in big trouble now. <laughs> Here's Michael Buffer. Of Las Vegas, Nevada, USA, Mayweather Promotions and Golden Boy Promotions are proud to present the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC. Welterweight Championship of the World. Sponsored by Serrasse Kangaracta Tecate. DeWalt Power Tools, new 20-volt max lithium-ion system, AT&T. Get it faster with AT&T, rethink possible. Southwest Airlines, fly Southwest, it's the right call, and Cancun Tourism, discover paradise. This belt is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission Chairman Bill Brady, Executive Director Keith Kaiser, and the World Boxing Council President and supervisor for this contest tonight, Jose Suleiman. At ringside, the three judges scoring the bout on the 10-point system, Adelaide Bird, Jerry Roth, and Glenn Trowbridge. And inside the ring, in charge of the action, Hall of Fame announcer, Joe Fair but Firm Cortez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet the stars of star power. Fighting out of the red corner, wearing black with orange, official weight, 146, one half pounds. A perfect professional record, 41 fights, 41 victories, including 25 knockouts. And he has captured six world titles in five divisions. From Grand Rapids, Michigan, 
the former junior lightweight world champion, former lightweight world champion, former super lightweight world champion, former two-time welterweight world champion, and former super welterweight champion of the world, the undefeated Floyd Money. And fighting out of the blue corner, wearing silver with red, officially weighing in also at 147 pounds, a perfect, pardon me, a professional record consisting of 29 victories, including 22 knockouts with two defeats and two bouts even. His KO to victory ratio was among the highest in boxing history among welterweight champions. From Ventura, California, the reigning, defending, WBC welterweight champion of the world, Vicious Victor Ortiz. Well, Dave, you can certainly feel the electricity in the crowd. There's been a lot of anticipation for this one. It's funny that most people say that Victor Ortiz is the bigger right, of the guys. two guys. All right, gentlemen, we were the rules in the dressing room. With actually had I expect a good, title. clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Watch out for the heads inside. Give me good sportsman like conduct. Remember, guys, I'm fair but I'm firm. Touch him up. No. Well, uh, or Ortiz weighed a half pound heavier. <laughs> 147 versus 146 and a half. From the MGM Grand of Las Vegas. Uh, let's get ready to run Michael Buffer kind of forgot his uh, signature. <laughs> but in the end, he's a winner. I can do my thing here. Here we go. Round one Floyd Mayweather Jr. in the black and orange. And in uh, the silver trunks that look white on the screen with the colors of the Mexican flag and the American flag on the left side of his leg is Victor Ortiz. Jab getting through there by Mayweather right away here. A little tentative is Ortiz who needs to put pressure on him. One of the things you watch for with Mayweather is that sneaky right hand in the first round of fights. He can throw it like a right hand lead as if he were a lefty. And you can also make you miss and then turn quickly and make you pay. And I'll tell you, well, with all the talk about his age, I mean, that shows you right there. The sneaky right hand, he turned it over. He still has the hand speed. Another right hand bops off the face of Ortiz. Ortiz catches him back. Now he tries to muscle Mayweather back, and Mayweather won't move. Ortiz came there, as you see, he's a southpaw. His power is in his left hand. Oh, man. There's that right hand lead by Mayweather, perfect against the lefty. And what you watch with him when you measure punching power is a guy that's like a seven on a scale of ten, but he hits you with a ton of sevens in the course of a fight. And that's what he means by breaking guys down. There's one thing that's clear to me at 34 years of age. He hasn't lost a heck of a lot in terms of speed. And it's and it's significantly different from Ortiz. Ortiz is more of a power guy, yet the power punches in this round have been landed by Floyd Mayweather Jr., who's the challenger here. Well, Ortiz needs a cooperating style in order to get inside and put his opponent down. He had it against Berto. Will he have it here? Different story. And he was down twice against Berto himself, but uh, many people think that that could be the fight of the year. It certainly was a great fight. But this is a different kettle of fish. Berto, while a wonderful fighter, is not in the same league, nor many other fighters, with Floyd Mayweather Jr. For all of the said negative about him, he is a great fighter. And he's got the right yeah. hand lead again after the shoulder roll he shows. And that's there all night for him, and he knows it, and that's his power shot. 
where the left hand lead for the southpaw would do the same thing. No problem so far with the guys stepping on each other's feet. Interesting thing about Mayweather is, regardless of whether it's righty or lefty, he throws the right hand at a time when you think he's going to throw the jab. That's one of the things that makes him so effective. And he's landed it about four or five times in this first round and has won the first round. Is the corner of Victor Ortiz. Roger Mayweather talking to Floyd. Rafael Garcia, long time cut man, Leonard LB. He's kind of his business manager. Also on the phone, Nate Jones, former heavyweight contender. All right, we go to round number two. I'm Bob Sheridan along with Dave Montempo. Wherever you are around the world, hope you're enjoying this one as much as we are. Some night of boxing is so far. A lot of anticipation for this fight. Ortiz really didn't open up in the first round because he could. He can't box with this guy, Dave. He's got to uh, try to muscle this guy as best he can. He can't box with him. So what he's going to try to do is bob and weave, work the way inside, cover up on the way, and then try to do damage to the body once he gets close in his perfect game plan. But Mayweather, with his reach, with his anticipation, look, here's the right hand greeting him on the way in when you thought a jab might be the shot there. He is so instinctive. And there's the, the defense. defensive move by Mayweather. And if we get numbers throughout the course of this fight, it will be quite telling to see what Ortiz gets in. Most Mayweather opponents are less than 20%. Well, so far, he's going to be under that. Yep. And the southpaw style with Floyd's right hand is no problem at all for him. But, you know, Ortiz looks tentative to me right now. And this isn't the way he wants to fight this fight. Uh, well, well, the big stage is in front of him now. But, you know, Dave, for a professional athlete, the big stage is, is coming in and maybe the first round. Once you're a professional athlete, whether it's the first pitch in baseball or the kickoff of the football or they drop the puck in hockey or in this case, the fight starts, you don't feel that kind of pressure anymore. You're an athlete and you're trying to, in the case of Ortiz, retain the title and may really sort of pick it in the park. Different fighters have a different kind of aspect to it, and they need something to get them going, which Ortiz is trying to open up a little bit now and muscle Mayweather and rub heads with him, etc. But when he came out here, he's looking at something that is a sight he hasn't seen before. He's getting hit with shots he hasn't been hit with before. It's taking up the time to adjust, but he did land a nice left hand. And every time he does anything, the crowd explodes here at the MGM Grand Garden Arena. The Mexican Independence Day weekend is huge here in Nevada. And so the Mexicans are out here rooting like mad for Victor Ortiz. Chopping right hand by Mayweather. Another right hand by Mayweather. And another one. Every time he does that, Ortiz has to reload. And he gets slow, and Mayweather chops him again. And you see how quick he grabbed onto him and prevented him? Mayweather backed off a shot coming to him and then landed a right hand. You know, he protects himself a lot defensively with his left elbow when he throws that right hand, so he's very hard to counter him because he's so fast. Two on the books, two for Mayweather. Keep backing that bitch up. Keep backing him up. Keep backing him up, baby. Keep backing him up, Yeah. Come on, bro. Keep banging him up. Good luck to you. The mound go to you. Keep banging that bitch up. Good luck. You know, nobody ever. Arrima, tío. Si cerquitas, entonces la tiras, pero con la tiras ya sabes. Arrima, tío, pestilado. 
Métese el cabrón derechito o de ganchito, pero métete para allá. No te quedes enfrente de él. ¿Ok? ¿Está bien? Well, we get a look at Mayweather with a good right hand. Look at the leverage on it. All of a sudden, standing straight, he generates power through the hips and lands it right on the eye area. Floyd Mayweather holding Ortiz to less than 20% in the power department in that round, but also just a quick sniping shot. He got a lot on it. That's the seven I was talking about. Well, I'll tell you this as we go to round number three. Ortiz has got to be throwing when he comes into the zone, or he's going to get counted to death tonight with that right hand of uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. Mayweather is doing about what he wants to do in this fight so far. And we're in the early rounds. He said that he would take him to school in the early rounds and then really start to beat him up in the later rounds and then knock him out. But geez, a nice uh, heavy left hand downstairs. And look at an immediate counter left cross by, uh, left hook I should say, by the right-handed fighter Mayweather with some decent power on it that shook the balance of Nick Ortiz. Look at Mayweather cut off the ring so nicely here that trying to get out one step to the side. Now he doesn't chase, he does it exactly right. This guy's a master boxer. Slowly use the angles, make it smaller. He took one there, but he had good things set up. There's, there's more of the defense where he has those elbows and hands up high, and Ortiz lashed out with a good right hand and left hand, and neither one of them was taken very flush by Mayweather. See that elbow comes forward, he catches a lot on that elbow. Elbow out, there's the good right hand again. Another right hand. Now you can do seven or eight things well if you're Ortiz and you think you've got some momentum going, and Mayweather takes it all away from you in one shot. That's about 10 or 12 during the course of the fight. He had four in the last round. That's his fourth one in this round. Look how quick he is when Ortiz comes after. I'll tell you one thing, Dave. I hope that we get to see Mayweather and Pacquiao. And we had the opportunity to call that fight because, man, that would be sensational. It'd be one of the all-time greats. But this fight is far from over. Well, everything is going May with his way. Look at him, he parries off the straight left hand. That time he got tapped in the chin, but was pulling back. And Ortiz just it. missed. Ortiz just missed with a big left hand. And Mayweather slapped it away at the last second. Great defensive fighter, but then when you add power to it, you get this from Mayweather. 16 for 29 in the power department in round three, more than 50%. And that's the range where you start to stop guys if you consistently get that number over 50. This is round four at the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm the Colonel Bob Sheridan with Dave Bontempo. Floyd Mayweather Jr. with his back to you in the black trunks. Really teeing off with that right hand on the left eye of the champion Victor Ortiz. Ortiz hasn't been able to force this fight at all. Mayweather dictates. Look at this. 
I mean, that time, Ortiz tried to explode, and everything was smothered by the hands of Floyd Mayweather. This is what Ortiz is not used to, being a split second late when he has a good idea. Joe warns Ortiz about his head. When we were in the dressing room, Danny Garcia said to Joe Cortez, warn him about the elbow because, you know, he throws his elbows, but he blocks off with his elbows. Look at this. I mean, it's a, it's a boxing lesson, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Guys on two different levels. Ortiz tries to in a hurry. Tries to open up, he catches him decently. Mayweather says no, and Ortiz doesn't like it. The crowd going absolutely crazy. Anytime Ortiz ignites, so does the crowd. One of the few bright spots for Ortiz in the fight so far. And again, he almost got there. That's the trouble with Mayweather. A lot of people almost get there. He was hit pretty good in the second round in his last fight by Shane Mosley, but I think you said earlier that that's all Shane did. That was that it. Night. But even though Ortiz had that real nice flurry, he's not winning this round. That was his only flurry. And his flurry was like sizzling steak. He didn't really get much of it in. And the champ goes up, Ortiz, Ortiz, Ortiz. But on the three judges' scorecard, it's Mayweather, Mayweather, and Mayweather. Dropping most of them high in the forehead by the eye, pick him down the middle. And there's Ortiz batting back. But look where the hands are on Mayweather. He lunged forward with his head. Time has been called, and now a point's going to come away. The point. Well, headbutt. Point, headbutt. And it was an intentional point, headbutt. headbutt. That really hurts Ortiz because he was hey, having one of his most oh. aggressive rounds in the fight. Don't be doing that. Ortiz tries to score the chip. Mayweather makes him pay. What a rookie mistake there. Oh, oh, bad mistake. Ortiz. It's up to seven and eight. He's not going to make it. Nine and ten. It's all over. He's still out as he crawls to the corner right above us. He got suckered in. Floyd Mayweather made it seem like he would embrace him. And then he clocked him twice. A rookie mistake. And Floyd Mayweather has done it. He's the 147 pound world champion. After 16 months, no ring rust. He was counted out by his Ortiz. I'm going to see that again, Dave. Well, it was a beautiful freak. I mean, okay, the referee says point deducted, and Ortiz made an unusual maneuver to try and apologize again to Mayweather. Mayweather made it look like he would accept it, but then he turned and nailed it twice. Protect yourself at all, all times. times. Mayweather with a sneaky shot, and he caught him, and he really knocked him out. Because after the referee Joe Cortez, Cortez counted up to 10, he was still out for another oh, 10 now, or 12 seconds. The thing is, he had already apologized once to Mayweather. Yeah. This was the second time. Yeah. He did it right after the incident. But Mayweather being ingratiating to him now. And Ortiz smiling as he has throughout the confrontation today. But you know, no matter how he did it, he did it. This guy is a brilliant champion. Here we go now. Hey, there's the uppercut. Now here comes Ortiz. Trying for his best moments of the fight here. Now watch the head. He's doing well. Comes up. And then deliberate headbutt. A deliberate headbutt. Could have lost two points there. So now 
He goes for the apology. Floyd says, fine. They go for the embrace. Referee Joe Cortez is not there. Boom. Left hook. Right hand. Right hand. You don't hang out in the kill zone with Floyd Mayweather. Now, this is going to be controversial, and it shouldn't be. you got to protect yeah, yourself at all times. That took him out of it, and that finished. He's looking over at the referee. say about how he finished the fight. He finished it. And you know, Dave, you said that's the experience of Mayweather. He had, you know, sort of apologized to the head back before. Then he gets in, puts his hands up, but he doesn't get out of there. He lingers around. Here's the official announcement. From the MGM Grand, the official time, two minutes, 59 seconds of round number four. The winner by Knockout victory and new WBC welterweight champion of the world, Floyd Money Mayweather. Well, if that doesn't set the stage for Manny Pacquiao fight, of course, Manny's fighting uh, very, soon, uh, very soon and He's going to win his fight. He's fighting uh, Marquez for the third time, and the first two have been very, very close. So he has to do his job against an aging Marquez. But the first two fights have been, you know, coin tosses as to who won. Yeah, that, it's a set up. And there's only one point that separates Marquez from being the one and one from Pacquiao being one and one. One and one draw, I'm talking about. Wow, how about that? Floyd Mayweather Jr. We're going to wait for the interview by the HBO network in the United States. Uh, we're going to be able to drop in on it, so stick right with us here as Larry Merchant will go in there. And we'll have the interview with Floyd. And of course, he's going to be beaming. And Larry, I'm sure, won't hesitate to ask him the question, but I'll hey, Here we go. Uh, congratulations, Floyd. <laughs> You hear the crowd, at least a good part of it is in an uproar because they felt that you took shots at him unfairly after you went together in the ring, made up for the headbutt, and then you poked him. Uh, What's your story? Uh, first off, I want to thank God for, for this victory. Because uh, without God, all this wouldn't be possible. I want to thank my team. Um, I got hit with a dirty shot, and um, it's protect yourself at all times. Um, I hit him with a left hook right hand, and that ended the bout. So you're saying that even though it appeared that he didn't, wasn't protecting himself and thought that that was part of the ceremony that you were going through of apology, that you unfairly took advantage of it what do you say to those who say, what'd you do there? You were winning the fight and in I, charge. I just want to tell everybody that bought pay-per-view, that came out to Las Vegas, thank you. Anyway, it was a hell of a fight. Floyd, you know you're a promoter, but now we're talking to you as a, a prize fighter. Let's take a look at what happened at the end of the fight, oh, let's look and at you it. describe it. We touched, we touched gloves, we back the fight hook, right hand and that's all she wrote so it, it for you it was just an automatic response let's get on with the fight let's protect yourself at all time he done something dirty uh, we're not here to cry and complain about what he did dirty or what I did dirty I was victorious if he want a rematch he can get a rematch you were in charge of the fight you were aggressive and Trying and taking advantage of what you know. You, what I'm, you know what I'm gonna do because you don't ever give me a fair shake. You know that? So I'm gonna go and let you talk to Victor Ortiz, all right? 
I'm through. They put somebody else up and give me an interview. What Talk are you talking about? What you, are you, you talking heard about? Him. You never give me a fair shake. HBO needs to fire you. You don't know shit about boxing. You ain't shit. You're, you're not shit. I wish I was 50 years younger you and I'd care. kick your ass. You won't do shit. <laughs> 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 you won't do nothing. You won't do nothing. All right. We're now here with Victor Ortiz. You hear the crowd. You describe what happened at the end of the fight. Was it your fault for not protecting yourself at all times? No, 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 no. Absolutely not. Um, I was called a break by the referee. So uh, I did as I obeyed. You know, I obeyed exactly as I was told. And uh, I looked at the ref, and I went like that. And I looked up, and then boom, I was out. So. Uh, you know, it happens. All right, first let's show earlier in the round when you had him on the ropes. Okay. And you butted him. Was that just some reflex action or? I was going, I was going back. I was going back and then uh, he pushed me a little bit. So I wish I went back and then I just cocked back. It looked like, it looked like I really did it intentionally, but you know, it happens. I even apologized to him. I mean, uh, I'm very sorry for that. I'm not a dirty fighter. So you're saying you were just trying to jump on him and your head collided. Yeah, he, he, came, he came forward really fast. I, I wasn't expecting that. And my head was in his face, so I was like, oh, whoops. Uh, so like, as far as I'm concerned, you know, I'm, I'm sorry for that. But, but why are you, apo uh, you, you, you seem apologetic, but um, then you got together with him and what did you each say with each other? I told him, I'm sorry, Floyd. I didn't mean to do that, bro. My bad, man. And. Uh, my bad, let's do this. Where's the ref? Yeah, so Where's the ref? That was a couple of times. It's okay, though. You, do you think that was unfair? Or because you had a plan to get deep into the fight? Or is it your bad? You know, you can look at it two ways. Uh, at the end of the day, you know what? Um, I came out here to, to show the fans, you know, a good time. And um, as far as I'm concerned, I think they did have a good time, except for, you know, the little miscommunication there by the ref. But hey, it, it happens, you know. I'm not perfect, uh, no one is, and neither is the ref. So I have no one to blame for it. Um, it's a learning experience. Thank you very much. Thank you. Victor. Jim? All right, uh, Bob Sheridan back here with Dave Bontempo. With all of that done and said and we hear everything, let's be clear about it. It was an intentional headbutt. Yes, it was. No question about that. So he's fouled Mayweather. Mayweather gets a shot to repay him back. He's going to. Once the referee had stopped and took the point away and says action is back in, action is back in. The Ortiz comes up and offers his hands. Mayweather gave it to him, and he wasn't going to stop there. Mayweather attacked. And that's what you're supposed to do. I don't see it as anything bad that Mayweather did at all. You gotta protect yourself at all times. It's a fundamental in professional boxing. And actually, uh, the referee should be in the middle there too when they're going to do that. But Joe Cortez was looking over and uh, addressing the commission on this matter, and it was basically an anarchy situation. So. You don't see the referee in the middle separating you when you do the tapping of the gloves. By instinct, you just can't do that. When you see the fighters tap the gloves and apologize, often there's a referee in the middle of them supervising that and saying, okay, now go back and fight. You do that without the referee, you're taking matters into your own hands. If this was a different sport, it's like a, a football player fakes a spike and the defense bites on it and then he throws a touchdown pass. It's very, it looks controversial at the time, but Mayweather reacts instinctively. Now, you watch Joe Cortez. He's uh, still looking over at the, taking the point away, but the fighters get back together. He's definitely distracted, but the fight is back on again. So that point, you know, they'll talk about. But in reality, had Joe turned around and faced it, nothing different would have happened. Well, he, he could have got in the middle and separated them. But the point of the matter is, when you take it into your own hands, then, and, and, you, and he looked over at Joe Cortez after he was hit once. After the first punch landed, he looked over at Cortez and was looking at Joe Cortez when the second punch hit. Well, I find no fault with what uh, Mayweather did. 
Joe could have done uh, something differently and I'm sure he would if he had to do it again. On the other hand once uh, he says time is back in no matter where he's looking time is back in well, and that's the case. I could never imagine Sugar Ray Leonard making a mistake like that or Tommy Hearns making exactly. a mistake like that you know the 30th anniversary weekend it was but I thought uh, a youngsters rookie mistake that Victor Ortiz made and they could say what they want about Mayweather but I think he was within the rules. Well let's put it this way too. Victor could have done the same thing but he was so There's worried no about the illegal the ref, headbutt hey, that it, he wanted happens, to apologize. You know, I'm not perfect, uh, and actually what he was doing was going overboard in the sportsmanship department and, and not necessary. So so many ways to, to, to cut it but when they talk about protecting yourself at all times it looms large here. All right well that's pretty much the story here Floyd Mayweather retains his title and uh, uh, just a wonderful wonderful effort by both fighters for as long as it lasted. Here we go Dave with Vargas and uh, Jose Zito Lopez in the first fight of the evening here. And this was a good one. This is Vargas Jesse coming in with the unbeaten the record and Generation Lopez Varga. trying to be the most difficult opponent he's ever had. Vargas started quickly and he ended quickly but in the middle Lopez had some big moments some good body shots. Nice uppercuts on the inside. But not enough for Jose Cito Lopez because Vargas was too strong for him in the eventual outcome of the fight. It was a split decision, so it was close enough. He had a low blow here, and this could have been a huge factor. A point was taken away, but this ended up with two judges having it. One point opposite directions and one judge having it three points the split decision victory for Vargas. Varga. So Vargas gets the split decision victory and of course he's thrilled. We'll see a lot more from him as record Undefeated. moves to 17 Pablo and 0. Cesar El Demoledor Corrales. Now here's Morales and Cano in the second fight. And Morales really began to go to work in the middle rounds of this fight. Watch the work on the eye. The left eye of Cano becomes the story here because Morales pummels it, opens it up, and over the last four rounds of the fight, the damage became huge. And like the veteran he is, Morales took advantage. He went to the eye and he continually went to the eye and he split it open so bad at the end that they had to stop the fight. The corner actually told referee Kenny Bayless that uh, no more, we're not sending him out again. After all, Tano uh, is only 21 years of age and that's his first loss. It's no disgrace to lose to Eric Morales who makes history tonight with yet another title. Eric is thrilled and he should be. 35 years old and all kinds they of They want to make Eric El Terrible Corrale. And then in the next fight, which came to us live from Los Angeles, the Staples Center, this man, Saul Alvarez, takes on Alfredo, or Alfonso Gomez, I should say. Uh, and it was kind of interesting in the early going as Gomez was trying to do everything he could, but the big shot in the lands and puts Gomez down. And then it seems like Alvarez is coasting and big in a 15 second onslaught like in many of his fights. This one comes to an end. We see speed, power, and stoppage. Seven unanswered punches is all referee Wayne Hedgebet had to see. He stopped the fight and Saul Alvarez will win it by technical knockout victory. And then of course, Victor Ortiz was not vicious enough tonight. Now he could not bully Floyd Mayweather. And Mayweather's sneaky right hand against the left hand style like clockwork, landing it. And Regardless of the drama that came after this, Mayweather was dominating this fight. And no question about it, eventually ended in the fourth round with a little bit of controversy, but kind of like wherever Mayweather is, it's a bit of controversy, but 
This is Ortiz in one of his best flurries of the fight. Starts with a deliberate headbutt here by Ortiz. And that's what caused the problems. And he, he cut Mayweather in the jaw. So he apologizes once. That's the key thing there. He apologized one time. Then a second time, well, you're bringing gamesmanship into it. And uh, who's a better gamesman than Floyd Mayweather? And he couldn't recover from it. And Joe Cortez eventually counts him out. So Floyd Mayweather, a little bit of history of his own as he gets his seventh world title in five divisions. He can't make it. And even after this, when he's counted out, he crawls towards us, Dave. And Floyd Mayweather is the brand new welterweight champion of the world. And he gets in it with Larry Merchant at the end of the fight and tells HBO to fire their announcers <laughs> doing it for years. So, a bit of controversy, but as far as I'm concerned, no question as to who the victor was in this fight. Any final comment, Dave? Uh, he's a genius, Money Mayweather. The second apology, I think, is a big thing there. And he always shows us he's a special fighter. I want to thank our statisticians, Tammy Cotel, Steve Brenner, and Dan Raphael from ESPN.com. Our executive producer and director tonight was Frank Belmont, and our producer, Jason Bidell. For Mayweather Promotions, Golden Boy Promotions, and for Dave Bontempo, and our entire staff at Belmonte Productions, I'm the Colonel Bob Sheridan saying thanks for joining us, and so long from Las Vegas, Nevada.